The Ryzen lineup of CPUs are comparatively very powerful productivity-wise for the amount of money you have to pay for them. With Ryzen 7 you get 8 cores, Ryzen 5 you get 6, and Ryzen 3 you get a quad core for a small amount of money. Now, the thing that I want to answer with this video is if you're using Premiere Pro to edit all of your YouTube videos, how much of a reason is there to upgrade your, I don't know, 1300X to a 1600X or your 1600X to a 1700X? How much of a reason is there to go between the different CPUs in the Ryzen lineup um, if you're rendering on Premiere Pro? Now before I go any further with this video, I do want to clarify my testing methodology so that if you don't agree with it, you don't get like halfway into the video, realize that you don't agree with my testing methodology and then threaten to burn my house down because I wasted some of your time. Now because I'm not a massively established YouTube channel that AMD just like chucks products at that I need for tests, I had to simulate the actual Ryzen lineup. Now I only have a 1700X CPU. And uh, for this test, how I kind of simulated a Ryzen 5 and a Ryzen 3 CPU was by turning off the appropriate amount of cores and then clocking it to the actual clock speed of the CPU that I'm trying to simulate. Now I do realize that this isn't really the most accurate test because the 1700X has way more cache available for the cores. So it means that yes, you might be running at the same core speed as the 1600X with the same core amounts, but you're, you still have more cache available. So it might perform better than that specific CPU. And now with all of the semantics out of the way, I think we can have a look at the system that I'm gonna be using for the tests today. This is actually the uh, liquid cooled PC that I've been building over the last couple of months. And if you want to see a more detailed video about the PC that's standing behind me here, do have a look in the video description below. I'll have it linked there, the video that is, not the PC. Um, but yes, let's give you a basic rundown of the parts. It's got a 1700X CPU in it. It's got 16 gigs of DDR4 clocked at 3000 megahertz. And I've got all of the components running at the exact same kind of specification for all of the tests. So the only variable is the core amount and the actual core clock that I'm gonna be running it at. Uh, for a graphics card, I've got a GTX 1080. And uh, for the actual scratch disk I'm gonna be using, it's a 500 gig 960 Evo NVMe drive um, yeah and it's the same for all of the tests so hopefully it gives a rough indication of how much performance you'll gain from moving between the different CPUs in the product lineup and then finally when it comes to the actual video that I used for the rendering in Premiere Pro uh, I just used a bunch of kind of 1080p 50 frame per second footage that I use in my daily kind of YouTube workflow I make that sound like I'm an actual kind of full-time youtuber which I'm I'm not um, but yes, so the footage has an adjustment layer on it, which has a lot of color correction in it. And then I also am running a lot on top of that. And then there are a lot of like video transition effects between all of it. So it's four and a half minutes of kind of like a lot of stuff happening. So it's quite a difficult video to render. I know it's not 4K. I wanted to use 4K initially for this test, but I couldn't find any decent 4K stock footage that was of a high enough bitrate. Uh, yeah, speaking of rendering bitrate, I'll have in the in the screen magically appear the kind of actual rendering settings that I used for this video and it's it was the same for all of the tests throughout. <gasps> Finally, through all of the just kind of setting up the tests, now with all of that out the way, let's actually have a look at the performance. The first graph that we're going to be looking at today is the simulated stock CPUs that I have in the different tiers. Now, the way that I did this is I actually clocked it to the stock boost clock of the CPU because I think with even something like a Wraith Spire cooler on it, you're gonna be getting that boost clock a lot of the time. And then with the specific core count of that CPU as well. Now, the thing that's the most obvious from this graph is that it's a very linear graph. There's a very exact difference between each CPU stepping. And I think that that's because the, the difference is pretty much the core amount because all of the Ryzen CPUs are weirdly clocked to like pretty much the same core clock um, if you're looking at the X variant. So if you're looking at the 1700X as opposed to the 1600X, they're all boost to about 3.7 gigahertz. And they also all seem to have a fairly similar max overclock as well. They all get to about four gigahertz if you're lucky. 
Now that's actually what I then did, is I decided to try and overclock all of them to 4 GHz or have it run at 4 GHz for the different core amounts. And again, it's a very linear graph showing that one of the problems with this test is the whole cache thing. So you have to keep in mind that there might actually be a bigger difference between the specific CPUs uh, because yes, they have a smaller amount of cache compared to the bigger CPU. And now actually moving on to the difference between the kind of stock clock of 3.7 gigahertz or 3.6 in some of them um, and the 4 gigahertz overclock. Now, I was really impressed by how much of a difference this actually made in render time because, well, it's like a 300 megahertz overclock and it made like a 40 second difference in most of the cases, which means that if you have a Ryzen CPU and you're running Premiere Pro, you have to overclock it to the maximum amount that you can get that CPU because every small bit it makes a big difference in render time because 40 seconds is a lot for a for a you know five minute render of something now again the graph is very linear in that there is pretty much a two minute difference between each cpu step and i think that can kind of bring me to a conclusion that i can fetch from whether or not if you have a ryzen 5 should you upgrade to a ryzen 7 cpu and i honestly think at this point don't because, well, the new version of Ryzen is coming out just around the corner and they're supposedly going to be clocking about 400 megahertz higher. And if, you know, from this test, it's clear that a small overclock, a small kind of clock increase makes a really big difference when it comes to Premiere Pro. Um, so don't go from a Ryzen 5 to a Ryzen 7. If you have, however, a Ryzen 3, maybe it's worth it to go to even a Ryzen 7 because I think that a 10 minute render time on a four and a half minute video that's 1080p isn't really acceptable. The wait becomes really long. And the test became a bit infuriating because initially it was like, wow, these renders are going by really quickly. And then you get to the kind of simulated like Ryzen 3 CPU with no simultaneous multi-threading on it. And it just takes forever. So yes, going from Ryzen 3 to even Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 is a worthwhile upgrade. But if you have something like a 1600X, for example, that clocks fairly comfortably to four gigahertz, stick with it. Um, if you feel that you have to upgrade, upgrade maybe to the next generation of Ryzen or even the generation of Ryzen after that because I think you'll be fine for the time being. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Maybe have a look around and see if there are some other videos that maybe tickle your fancy. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.